Welcome back to Cruising America, everyone. Today we're visiting Big Bend National Park in Texas. We're Steve and Kathleen. We're Cruising America in our 35-foot fifth-wheel RV, chasing 70-degree weather year-round. If you'd like to watch our previous videos, please click the Cruising America playlist link in the description below this video. Otherwise, enjoy our current episode starting now. While not the most visited national park, Big Ben has greater diversity of climates and animals than most national parks. In other words, you get a lot of bang for the national park visiting buck when you visit Big Bend. Tucked into the Big Bend of the Rio Grande River, whose headwaters are in southern Colorado, Big Bend National Park offers river, desert, and mountain terrain. The southern boundary of the park is literally 118 miles of the Rio Grande River, which of course is the border with Mexico. The river is an arcing linear oasis, a ribbon of green cutting across the dry desert and carving deep canyons. Irrigation, dams, agriculture, manufacturing, exotic plants, and evaporation sap most of the Rio Grande's water before it gets to the park. Inside the park, the river's water mostly comes from Mexico's Rio Conchos. Santa Elena Canyon is one of the park's best-known features. Definitely a must-see if you visit. It provides living proof water can cut hundreds or thousands of feet down through rock given enough time. If the short trail at the exit of the canyon isn't enough for you, Consider a river rafting trip. Just make sure you talk with one of the local rafting guide companies to coordinate your trip with desired river state and water flow. It's definitely seasonal. Desert terrain is bountiful given the geology of the area. Big Bend National Park lies in the northern part of the Chihuahuan Desert, one of North America's four major deserts. This young desert is just 8,000 years old. Surprisingly green and fairly lush, its rainfall comes mostly in the July to October monsoon. Summer ground temperatures can reach 140 degrees midday, or freezing in the winter as northern storms sweep by. If you want warmer winter walking or hiking, or just to enjoy the outdoors, the good news is the lower desert can be near 80 degrees in winter. Ancient peoples lived here some 10,000 years ago, but left little evidence until the archaic or desert culture 8,000 years ago. They used hundreds of desert plants as food and medicine, including sotol, yucca, prickly pear, mesquite, and acacia. Finally, and most surprisingly to many people, Big Bend National Park offers real mountains. Mountains, of course, attract creatures, several quite rare and unexpected in a desert. The isolation that began thousands of years ago as the Great Ice Age ended accounts for the rarity. As colder, moister climates retreated northward, many plants and animals were stranded in the Chisos Mountains by the surrounding lowlands increasing aridity. Carmen Mountain white-tailed deer, for example, live in the Chisos and nearby Sky Island Mountains, yet are unknown elsewhere. Average rainfall at the basin, a Chisos mountain spot popular with both people and wildlife, is more than twice that at Rio Grande Village just 20 miles away by the river. Going to the mountains on the basin road, you pass grasslands punctuated by century plants and sodal 
which give way to green leafy shrubs. Then bushes get taller with evergreen sumac, mountain mahogany, Texas madrone, and common bee brush. At 4,500 feet, tall evergreen and deciduous trees appear. Higher up in the drainages are masses of trees, junipers, small oaks, and pinyon pines. Birders and other wildlife watchers know the greatest numbers of species are often found at the ecotone, the transition area between adjacent ecological habitats. Big Bend National Park's many varied ecotones, formed by river, desert, and mountains, result in an outstanding diversity of scenery and wildlife. Elevation contrasts create varied microclimates, further enhancing diversity of plant and animal life, just waiting for you to visit. Music